So in general, when you're thinking about using computer vision to analyze faces, there's this whole space of facial analysis task that you can do. The first task is seeing if there's even a face there in the first place. So that's face detection. And the example that I have of coding in a white mask, that's a failure example when it comes to detecting a face. If you don't detect a face, you can't get to the other task. Once you've detected a face, you might be curious about what kind of face you have. And that's where the different types of classification com can come in. So gender classification or age classification, or you might even try to figure out the emotion on a face, right? So you go from is there a face or not, face detection, to what type of face. And gender classification is trying to answer that kind of question. Then you get into face recognition, which you often hear about. Face recognition is asking, have I seen this face before? And there are two types. There's face verification, what you might use to try to unlock your phone. OK, you stored an image of your face before. Now is it the same face? You also have face identification. And when you're thinking about that, it's trying to match one person against a whole gallery of images. So think of looking for a missing person or maybe trying to find a criminal suspect. So when you hear facial recognition technology or face detection or facial, sometimes they use face and facial interchangeably. There are different kinds of tasks. Is there a face there in the first place? What kind of face? And have I seen this face before? <laughs>
govern the use of this technology and to also look at the social implications of this technology is going to be needed, which is why I've started a working group with the IEEE to create international standards for facial analysis technology that doesn't just look at the technical considerations around performance metrics, but also looks at the ways in which this technology will be used in various domains. So you might be using the technology with law enforcement or for surveillance, and the considerations you have there would be different than the considerations you have when you're using it in a consumer product, such as what you have for unlocking your iPhone. But we need a more participatory process of even governing this technology. So citizens, the people who are actually impacted by the technology, have a say in terms of how it's used and even if it's used. I don't want to see facial recognition on lethal autonomous weapons. And I honestly don't see facial recognition being used in communities of color in a way that wouldn't propagate further discrimination and profiling. So there are certainly areas where we need to have a conversation and say, are these technologies actually helping us do what we think they're doing, or are they propagating bias and encoding uh, racial profiling? Theoretically, you could have good uses of facial recognition technology. For example, you can try to find missing persons, and actually, I do believe some theme parks are using facial recognition to try to find kids when they go missing. But beyond a theme park, when somebody is actually gone, this could be one way of trying to find that person. If you're thinking about human trafficking, this again could be another use case that would ideally be for good, but let's say you're trying to find a missing person and you have a demographic profile, but your gender classification is erroneous. We already know when we're looking at missing persons, women of color particularly often are marginalized and they're not prioritized. So now you might think, okay, here's this technology that can help, but if you're not even testing the technology to see if it works well across a whole range of different types of people, it might not actually do what you think it's doing. And then if you only rely on that technology, you can create a systematic exclusion you're not aware of. <laughs> So I want to move from just performance metrics, which is what I'm able to show with the research, into more of a performance piece where you can get at the emotions behind experiencing algorithmic exclusion. And so that's how I've been using spoken word to connect with people on a more visceral level concerning this kind of research. I've been working on a new piece called AI Ain't I a Woman. It'll be coming out soon, but I can give you a few verses. My heart smiles as I bask in their legacies, knowing their lives have altered many destinies. In her eyes, I see my mother's poise. In her face, I glimpse my auntie's grace. In this case of deja vu, a 19th century question comes into view in a time when Sojourner Truth asked, ain't I a woman?